phase bridge rectifier. We have a delta primary and a star secondary. Each one of these phases, D1, D2 and D3, feeds into a half bridge that consists of two diodes. Now only one of the two diodes in a half bridge will be on, never both of them, on at the same time. Now the way that you can look at this is that when V1 is the most positive in the circuit, then some other, other phase is going to be the most negative. And let's say in this case here, uh, when V1 is the most positive, then the most negative one here will be V2. So then V2 will be the most negative. Now the diode with the most positive on its anode, it will switch on and current will flow. through the load in the direction where the diode is that has the most negative. The current is here going to flow um, in this direction and here it will be flowing in the opposite direction. Then the next um, point that we have to look at is, is when V3 becomes the most negative, then it changes from this point here, when V2 is the most negative, but now V3 is the most negative. And when V3 is the most negative, now we have, we have it, that, that one is now the most negative. So the current now will switch from this red one here to the blue one and flow in this direction. The current will be flowing like that. So you will always have one phase feeding, another phase receiving. When we reach this point here, V2 becomes the most positive. But look here, V3 is still the most negative. So now we have that the most positive now will be V2. Now V2 has become the most positive. And remember it was coming through here, going in that direction, and now it will be going up through that one there, and the current will be flowing in that direction. So we have AC as a transformer, but on this side here we will have current only going in one direction, which is the up through the load, which is direct current, so it's DC. What we are now concerned about are two things. We want to know how does the current shape through the diode look, and how does the wave shape over the load look. And when we go and look at the load, we see that on the positive side, when the diode D1 switches on, V positive will be V1. When diode V3 switches on, V2. And when diode V5 switches on, it will be V3. So we can go and say, right, that that wave shape there will be what we see on the positive side of the load. And that I can mark as V positive. Those three together form a half wave rectifier in that direction. But when I go and look at these, D2, D4, and D6, I see that when each one of them switches on, the voltage that I will see here will be connected to the most negative. And here is the most negative voltage. So now I can go and I say, right, there I have V negative envelope of V negative. And that now is V negative. When I go and look at the load, I see that V load is V 
positive minus V negative. Because I must subtract that which is the start, the end of the arrow from the start of the arrow. So let's go and do it. 0, 0,866 minus minus 0, 0,866 gives us 1,732. 0, 0,5 minus minus 1 gives us 1,5. 0, 0,866 minus minus 0, 0,866 gives me 1,732. 1 minus minus 0, 0,5 gives me 1,5. 0, 0,866 minus minus 0, 0,866 gives me. So there I have idea of how it will look. And there is my below. If I now look at this, I see, oh, this is a sine wave. But this sine wave is a line voltage and not a phase voltage because here was my phase voltage V1, V2 and V3 so that is a section of a line voltage and this limit there is pi over 2 do you agree? and 30 degrees to that side is pi over 3 and on this side is pi over 3. So if I go and I determine that area under the graph there, and I determine that as my period, T is equal to pi over 3, then I can determine the average value of V load. The average value of V load is VDC is equal to 1 over T of the integral to 0 and T of VT dt. And that is given by my period is pi over 3. And the integral is from pi over 3 to 2 pi over 3. Of what? Of V line max. Sin omega T D omega T. Happy? So that V line max down to the front, the 3 goes to the top, I have 5 below the line and the integral of sin omega t is minus cos omega t and the limits are pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And that gives me 3 V line max over pi minus cos of 2 pi over 3 minus the minus cos of pi over 3. And therefore it's equal to 3 V line max over pi. In, in terms of V max, it is 3 square root 3 V max over pi. Do you now the currents. The current IV1 flows when V1 is the most positive. And the load current here is IL. And that is the current that's going to flow through that diode. And that is ID1. What about ID2? ID2 is the current that flows when V3 is the most negative. Where is V3 the most negative? From there to there. So there I have my current ID2. Similarly, ID3 is the current that's going to flow when V2 is at its most positive. And the level is IL. And ID4. Now do you realize why these diodes were numbered like that? Because it makes it easy to construct that wave shape. So now that you know the pattern, you can just carry on. 60 degrees later, it switches on. And ID6 
Yeah, every 60 degrees, a, the next device will switch on. So I1 is equal to ID1 minus ID4. ID1 minus ID4. So yes. Why are you using ID1? So when I go to IA now, what do I have? I've got a dot here and I have a dot here. So the current flowing out of the dot here means the current flowing into the dot there. So I can take I1 and just put IA here times the turn ratio. And when I go and I look at IB, and if IB is my triangle, then it is I2 is equal to ID3 minus ID6. So it's equal to ID3 minus ID6. So I'm going to take ID3 and I'm just going to replace it here with I, I2 here. So there I have ID3 and what I have to put on is ID6. So ID6, there is ID6. So I just go and put it down like that there. And that section there. And now I have minus IL times the turns, uh, I haven't got the turns ratio yet because I'm now busy with I2. So now I have I2, I2, triangle, so triangle is IB. I can now go and replace I2 with IB. And now I can just put in times the turn ratio. Look at this, Ix is equal to Ia minus Ib. Are you happy with that one? Okay, so it's Ia. Ia is 0 minus Ib is minus Il. So it's Ia minus minus Il gives us Il. Next one. IA is IL minus minus IL gives us 2 IL. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. And here is exactly the same. And then we get to IL minus 0 gives us IL. Then we have that one there. Then we get to IA is 0 and IB is IL. So 0 minus IL gives us minus IL. There's minus IL. I'm sorry. Minus IL. Minus IL gives me minus 2 IL. And then I have minus IL minus 0 gives me minus IL, which is that one there. Am I happy now with myself? Yes. And then the last one, I have 0 minus minus IL gives me plus IL. So there is my wave 